your thoughts on the debate last night? Well, you know, it's always frustrating uh, that there are so many issues out there. And when you have 10 candidates up there, it's hard to address them all, get the time to address them. But I think, to me, uh, two issues uh, come to the fore. And, and number one is the discussion that I had with uh, Joe Biden regarding health care. Uh, and I am not surprised but disappointed, you know, that Biden is echoing the remarks of the health care industry, which made $100 billion in profit last year. Uh, and we're doing everything that they can uh, to prevent us from doing what the American people want and certainly what Democrats want, and that is move to Medicare for all, a single-payer program. And to my mind, this we are well beyond the policy issue because it is impossible to, dis- to defend the dysfunctionality of the current system. Uh, we have a system right now, Tom, and everybody has got to understand this. We are spending twice as much per person on health care as do the people of any other country, Canada, UK, France, Germany, etc. Twice as much. And yet we have 87 million people who are uninsured or underinsured. 30,000 people a year die because they don't get to a doctor when they should. And we have 500,000 people going bankrupt as a result of medical bills. How insane is that? We are spending by far the highest prices in the world for prescription drugs. I went to Canada last month. Price of insulin for diabetics in Canada, the tenth the price of what it is here in the United States because of the greed and corruption and price fixing of the pharmaceutical industry. So this is a system that cannot be defended. It's a system that is simply designed to make huge profits for the drug companies and the insurance companies. We have got to move to Medicare for all. I am disappointed but not surprised in Biden's opposition. Yeah. Senator, the it seemed to me, particularly when when uh, I forget who was doing the questioning, but uh, in fact, I don't even know these ABC candidates. I, I, I think it might have been Jonathan Carl or whatever his name is. But anyhow, um, he was trying to basically, it seemed to me, get Elizabeth Warren by proxy yourself um, to make the mistake that Walter Mondale made. And for, for younger listeners, people who don't remember the 1984 election, a lot of people thought this was the moment when Walter Mondale lost that election. If I can just play this clip, it's about 10 seconds or so, 15 seconds. And, and, and I'd, like, I'd love to get your thoughts on the politics of all this. Here's, here's Walter Mondale in 1984 when he was running against Ronald Reagan. Mr. Reagan will raise taxes, and so will I. He won't tell you. I just did. And then he goes on to say that, you know, Reagan's going to is going to do it in a way that will hurt working class people. And and he won't do that. He'll uh, have his tax increases against the rich. Um, I, I, it was almost like they were just like trying to, to wring that statement or something, some variation on that out of Elizabeth Warren last night. And, well, I don't, go ahead. The answer is, I think you're right. But I don't think they have to wring it out of Biden. I think that is exactly what Biden's what Biden is trying to do. And this is why this is very disingenuous uh, and dishonest. Yeah. And that is right now, I'll give you an example, Tom. You know, and I see this every day. I talk to a guy who works for a big company uh, and has a fairly good health insurance program. Uh, he pays $1,000. I think it's a family of four. He pays $1,000 a month in premiums, and he has a $4,000 deductible. So in other words, he is spending out of his own pocket, not to mention his employer. He is spending $16,000 a year in premiums and out-of-pocket expense before his insurance program kicks in. All right? right? Now, you can call those premiums premiums. You can call them insurance company taxes you can call them whatever you want to call them last i heard though a premium is dollars so what biden is trying to do is say bernie is trying to raise your taxes what he is ignoring is bernie is doing away with all of those premiums doing away with all of the out-of-pocket expenses 
doing away with all of the co-payments, doing, making sure that nobody in America under Medicare for All will pay more than $200 a year for prescription drugs, make sure that home health care is covered, make sure that dental care, eyeglasses, and hearing aids are covered. But getting back to your point, this is the oldest Republican talking point in the world. Oh, your taxes are going up. Well, the truth, though, is that at the end of the day, you are going to be paying significantly less for your health care on the Medicare for All than you do under the current system. So I guess if there's one human being in the world who really gets the joy and just loves paying premiums, well, I, I guess we're going to disappoint that person. Right. But most people understand that whether you pay premiums or whether you're paying taxes, the money is coming out of your pocket. And people want to spend less on health care. And on the Medicare for all, the average person will spend significantly less than he or she is spending today. You know, I'm a little bit tired of, you know, Biden echoing Republican talking points, health industry talking points in his attacks on Medicare for all. We can have that debate, but we should not be disingenuous. Yeah. Uh, I, at the end of the day, if you're paying a premium right now, we're going to eliminate that premium. And at the end of the day, we're going to eliminate out-of-pocket expenses, uh, co-payments, uh, and nobody in America will pay more than $200 a year for the prescription drugs they need because we're going to take on the pharmaceutical industry and stop their greed in which they are charging can people by far the highest prices in the world for medicine. So, you know, we can argue it, but I think Biden's uh, points are, are really quite disingenuous.